Beginning Hot Dado Podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dad Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, the kind of freaking out, Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. You can find me at odddadoutpodcast.com and at Odd Dad Out on all the social media places. And this is the show where I ramble and rant and empty out whatever the hell's going on in my head. And sometimes I talk about some weird news shit. And sometimes I tell you about a podcast or two or however many that I think you should be listening to. Because, like I always used to say, sharing is caring. Except today. Because it's late and I, I'm, I'm kind of freaking out. So, last week, I, I mentioned that school's going to be starting up here. And at the time of recording this... School starts tomorrow, and now it, it it's just, it's so weird. It really is. <sighs> but before I get into that, how are you? <laughs> not to make it all about me. I mean, not that the show isn't kind of by default all about me, but how are you doing? Because, you know, I realize I'm freaking out here, and I'm just freaking out about school stuff, but you know, the world is kind of crazy right now. And so, yeah, I hope you're okay. Shit's crazy. You know? Yeah. That's all I can really say. Because if you've listened to me any for any amount of time, I will bitch and moan and complain about a lot of stupid superficial shit and call a lot of people stupid. But I generally avoid mainstream serious topics. Because everybody's got an opinion, and in, in nowadays, if people don't agree with each other, they tend to be really mean. That's just kind of it. That is my general perspective, and and I dare anybody to argue with that. Granted, if you did argue with that, you would be proving my point. But nevertheless, it's it's just kind of people need to you know. Where's where's the fucking Rodney King and Reginald Denny and shit? Like, can't we all just get along? Seriously, I think I've used this line on the show before. People need to chill the fuck out. People need to stop being assholes to each other in a very general way. I don't give a fuck what you think about what you think. People need to stop being assholes to each other. There, I said it. That's about the, the vaguest extent of everything that I'm gonna say. Back to school. So. Yeah, <laughs> that that is what that is. So I'm I'm just like kind of you know I'm I'm freaking out a little bit because school starts tomorrow, and you know I normally I don't really so much worry about it because normally I'm sending the kids to school, <laughs> and realistically, normally on the first day of school, my wife takes them and she goes and she cries. And, and does all that. And then, you know, I get to sit at home and not have to take them to school that day. But now, like I mentioned last week, it's all going to be quote unquote distance learning. Fuck, I hate that term, but it's all going to be from home. And they're all going to be having like regular class consistently throughout the day, Tuesday through Fridays. And I'm, and I do appreciate that Mondays are an off day. It's, it's convenient for me and that I'm also off of, uh, work on Mondays generally. But that also means that Tuesday through Friday, while I have to go to work, I also have to be up at six, six thirty with the boys to make sure they get dressed and get breakfast and get ready for class because at 745 they need to be sat down at their desks logged in on their whatever their tablets or their their computers and signing into their morning check-in because they have a zoom it's basically attendance they have to sign in at 745 for morning attendance 
and then they roll through classes and it's rolling through classes. And so, you know, it's Zoom lesson followed by, you know, they may or may not have offline work to do. And then they'll have like a break and then another Zoom lesson. But it's basically like full class periods of Zoom lessons with workbooks and worksheets and all the things all day. And it is just full class all day at their computers with, you know, standard kind of class breaks and and then lunch is at 12. 12 to 12.30 is lunch. That's what they have. That's it. And they, they, the teachers even said during the conferences and everything, like 12 to 12.30, that's our lunch break too. Everybody, the entire office is closed. Everybody's shut down 12 to 12.30 every day. I'm like, okay. It's still kind of crazy. And then on top of all that, they have lessons until about four. Their last basically end of day check-in is 3.45 to 4 o'clock. So the boys now have long, and it's because they're going four days instead of five, but they have longer class days and consistent class days all week. And when am I going to sleep? Because I'm working these exact same days. And so I'm kind of freaking out. And on top of all that, Sam is starting school. And I and I got into a little bit last week about the whole, you know, normally when a kindergartner starts, those first few weeks are them kind of getting used to school. But he's not going to have that. For him, he's going to be sitting down in his what would be his playroom with a tablet, having to do whatever and having to do lessons. And he's going to get bored. He's not going to want to sit there and do his work. And we kind of half experienced this with bug last year at the end of the year when we were doing all the distance learning stuff. He didn't want to sit there. He got really frustrated sitting there at his computer. And he's, I seriously don't know if he's going to be able to sit there and handle it. You know, kindergartner and starting school for the first time and, you know, having to sit there at his desk for essentially eight hours um, even with breaks and things and all that, I really worry about him being able to do school from home. It, it's really not conducive to kindergarten. You know, the, the upper grades, you know, when you get into middle school and high school, it works out a little better. But for a kindergartner, that's really a rough sort of thing to do, especially when you're starting this way. You know, with Bug, he had half the year in school with kids, going through the routine, going through the the whole thing with school. And this is school. And he learned what school is and he understands it. But now Sam is starting school without school. He's starting school in the house on a, an iPad. And he's not going to understand what school is. And he's not going to understand school rules and school function and how you do things and raise your hand. And you can't just get up and walk off because you're bored. He's not going to understand that. And I'm, and I'm really worried about that. He's really, it's really going to kind of mess with things. So I don't know. And it, I guess it's, it's just, and I guess because he's, he's the youngest, you know, he's the last one starting kindergarten. And, you know, uh, I, I, I feel bad for him because he's not getting that same first day school experience that all the rest of them got, you know, we're having to try really hard to keep him excited for school because he's just, he's literally going to be 10 feet away from his bed. And okay. His desk is on this other corner. It's like 20 feet away from his bed for school. And that's, you know, there's a certain detachment, you know, you go to school and you get away from home. He's not going to have that. He's going to, go to school, he's going to walk out of his bedroom in his school shirt and sit down at a desk that he normally uses for his Legos and for cars. And I really worry about him being able to flip that switch and have that sort of detachment of this is school time. We're in school right now. And I, and I, I understand it's going to be hard. I, I'm a I'm hundred thousand percent sure it's going to be hard because when we did this in the springtime, 
with the other three boys, they had a hard time making that switch. They they had a hard time with looking at me as, okay, I'm dad in front of the classroom. This is my desk. And like, I'm not the teacher, but I'm the facilitator of class. I'm kind of the, you know, I'm the, I have a question about this thing. And granted, now they're going to have a lot more live chats and conversations with their teachers and all that stuff. But they're going to be, you know, they're, they're still going to be at home. I'm still going to have to be dealing with questions. If they have technical problems and computers are messing up or something like that, I'm still going to have to be there to help them. And especially with the two little boys, I'm going to have to be there to help them through just getting from lesson to lesson to lesson and helping them sign in to different programs and all the different things. And, oh, I've got a, hey, dad, I need to log in to Zern. I need to log in to Lexia. Uh, I need to log into my calendar, whatever. The little boys can't do that on their own yet, especially because this is a completely new thing to them. So they really don't know. And now, you know, so I'm going to have to be there for them and, and be, you know, the password guy and the technical guy. And the, hey, dad, can you grab my charger or where are my headphones or, hey, dad, I need my math workbook and all of that. I, I have to be that and I have to be that, you know, classroom facilitator for them all day, every day for at least this first month of school, because there's a chance in September, around mid-September, they might be starting that whole hybrid two days at home, two days in, on campus thing. And that's still not guaranteed because right now, uh, the whole regulations and stuff going right now is they're trying to set up some kind of guidelines, um, kind of the, if your county meets certain criteria and they set up a bunch of criteria, then the school districts can look at possibly opening on campus. But, you know, if you don't, and I guess like currently nobody meets the guidelines, none of the schools are cleared. I believe to actually open at least a hundred percent. I don't even know exactly it's, but right now everybody's going to, you know, on a distance learning stuff and it's just, you know, it's crazy. And it's, it's, it's a lot to, it's a lot more to deal with this time. And I think probably because of Sam starting kindergarten, I think that's it is because, you know, he's starting kindergarten and that makes, it's it's so much more stress on our end just because of the whole, this is not normal kindergarten. And it sucks. Kindergarten is an experience. Kindergarten is a, is a thing. And even like with all that, we're we're still not even going to be able to go because, you know, everything. They aren't allowing, when they do open up the campus again, parents aren't going to be allowed to take their children to class the first day. And, you know, that's tradition. You know, it's the first day of kindergarten. You take your kid to class. We're not going to be able to do that. And granted, I didn't. That wasn't my thing. That was my wife's thing. She always took them to class because she's a crier. But still, like, it's still tradition. It's still, you know, a thing you do. And it's it's funny because... Like my wife freaks out about this, right? this whole like, you know, because it's the first day of school. She always takes the first day of school off. And because of everything right now, they move the first day of school. So the day she had taken off for the first day of school is no longer the first day of school and it's homeschool stuff now. So it doesn't really matter. But it, it like, she, I, I, I laugh because I tell her about my first day of school and yeah, we just walked. Parents, it was like, mom worked during the day, dad worked late nights at the radio station. And so first day of school, me and my sisters just, you know, and he was home with my brother because he was younger. So he was home with my brother during the day and it was it. So he stayed home. Mom was at work. Me and my two big sisters Walked to school. My first day of kindergarten was just like dad stood out front, took a Polaroid of me with my Ninja Turtle folder and my backpack, and I walked to school with my sisters. That's it. Like my wife could not fathom this idea that they just won. 
that they just let me go. I'm just going to walk on my own, just walk to school and after school, just walk home. <laughs> but also the fact that at the time we lived in central Phoenix, like we walked our, our house was, and our school was walking distance, like maybe a mile, mile and a half to the Phoenix central library to downtown Phoenix. You know, my mom could walk to work and she worked in like the giant ass hospital down in central Phoenix. We, you know, where we were at, we were right off of central Phoenix and like the school that I had to cross a major, major road with like, you know, this is a, I think now it's a, I don't know if it's a five lane or seven lane road now. Um, but major, one of the major streets in Phoenix I had to cross every morning. I'm five years old. And, you know, I do this with in the morning. I'd walk with my, one of my sisters. Um, and then on my way home in the afternoon, I had a short, shorter day than she did. So I got out first and then she got out later. So I walked home across the major streets by myself. And I, now that I look at it, we pro- it was probably maybe a mile, mile and a half to walk to the school. Now it was a straight shot and basically go to one end of the street, turn left, keep walking until I get to the school. That's it. But like my wife freaked out about this. Like oh, she, she could not fathom again that they just let me go and that, you know, I was going <laughs> that like for the first day of kindergarten, they didn't go and cry and do all the things and walk me to class and all this stuff. But then that I walked this massive distance on my own every day across, you know, major Phoenix streets. Granted, this was in the early 90s. This was in uh, my 80, 80, no, it was in 90, 89, 89. Yeah, it would have been in 89, 90, somewhere around there. Because my baby sister was born in 89. So that's how I have to remember it. Because we moved out of that house and I started I finished kindergarten at a different school and that was in December. So that's how I remember. Anyway, getting a little peek into my brain, tinkering and the gears turning, trying to tell time and to pull out the friggin', you know, sundial and shit and figure out how are you doing time? We hadn't invented time when I was in kindergarten. We are making it up. And another drink of my instant coffee because at 12.30 in the morning, I don't want to wake up the entire house with the smell of a pot of coffee. <sighs> but yeah, kindergarten is an experience. And I, I worry about Sam's kindergarten experience getting messed up. And, you know, it's just it sucks. It really does. I'm trying to be funny, but man, this sucks. Uh, should I take a break? I don't know. I don't know if I want to take a break. Um, not especially super looking forward to doing a long show today. I don't think we're going to do a long show today. Um, here's a thought. Changing gears like I do. So I've, I've because of my, my art stuff, and I realized that now with the whole school thing, like the school schedule now, and it is somewhat related on get back on how that sentence I started a minute ago, um, the school thing now and the me needing to be there with them, at least for the immediate future to get everybody settled in and until the little boys are set in their schedules and I don't have to worry about they're not going to be able to sign into the next lesson and all that stuff until that's all kind of they've got that routine down i'm going to have to be there with them kind of eyes in the room basically um maybe taking a nap on the floor in the middle of the room hopefully out of sight of the cameras on their zoom lessons and whatever but i'm gonna have to be there with them and you know again, that's going to mean a, when am I going to sleep other than possibly taking a nap on the floor in the middle of the room? Um, like that also potentially eats into when can I record the show? 
because right now, considering that tomorrow morning, I got to be up at 6, 6.30 to sit down with the boys, because especially because it's the first day, we really got to get, you know, we got to be on it. We got to get moving, you know, have a good first day. But we also have to, you know, and all that, but, you know, every day I'm going to have to be up at 6, 630, help make sure the boys are up and dressed and breakfast and ready for school and everything. And, you know, it's, it's 12, it's almost 1, 1 a.m. right now. And that's not really something that I should voluntarily be doing when I know I have to be up so early and my odds of sleep are minimal. My opportunities for rest are very small during the day. So I worry about trying to find time for recording the show. And I, besides all of my other concerns for my kids that I'm concerned about with everything right now, on on the selfish side, I am actually concerned that I won't be able to record, that I won't have time for anything here. Um, that I won't have time for any of my art to do any more drawing. That I won't have time for the gardens. Um, I've got cucumbers coming in. I've got watermelon. I got three watermelons coming in. I've got a whole crop of pumpkins I've got to attend to right now. Um, I've got carrots that I just planted and I've, you know, I've got garden duties to attend to. Um, you know, I've got outside stuff besides being teacher dad that I need to worry about. And again, this, and you know, I've said before, this is, this is kind of my, my escape. This is very much part of what keeps me sane as much as you might consider me sane. Not many people do, but as to what level of sanity I am, I'm accused of. This keeps me there. And so I, I worry about if I'm actually going to be able to continue doing the show. And it's just because of my work schedule, school stuff with the boys, any other response. Hell, I don't know when I'm going to wash dishes at this point. <laughs> really? Like, when the fuck am I going to do laundry? I don't have time for laundry. Um, but, you know, it's, it's funny because I'm sitting here thinking this. And I had just recently been considering the idea of starting to do like Twitch streaming or something. And I realized you're like, what the fuck? Like you can barely keep up the the work rate of a fucking podcast and all of my other life shit that I do. Like, why the fuck would you start doing Twitch streaming? And honestly, it has more, it was actually more for art stuff. And in part, sort of some of this stuff because of like, I had just kind of the general idea was that I would be like streaming me sketching mostly. And the thing about streaming is, and the more I'm learning, especially with Twitch is like, these are long haul fucking things, you know, like I, you hear these stories about people that like, that's basically it's their full time job and they stream like, you know, seven, eight hours a day doing whatever the fuck it is they're doing because I don't watch Twitch to know. But they'll they'll sit there streaming video games or whatever for all the hours upon hours upon hours, like, you know, five, six days a week. And that's their job. And they get, you know, ad revenue and they get memberships and all these things they get for it. It's like, okay, and that's great. And I was like, I, I couldn't sit there drawing for eight hours or whatever. And honestly, I don't know if I could handle the trolls of fucking, especially on like something like Twitch, like especially like my art style and my skill level are not exactly something to brag about. I make things that are generally appealing to the eye. They're not overly complicated. They're not especially difficult, at least as far as I'm concerned. I don't look at them as being difficult for the most part. Me doing anything artistic is Nine times out of ten, me screwing around. <laughs> it's me going swish, 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 swish. Oh, that looks cool. Click, swish, swish, swish. 
clue. Oh, that looks cool. That's how I fucking art. <laughs> um, but you know, maybe there's an audience for that. And you know, I, like the like, am, am I like some sort of uh, what's the word for um weird the weird art the kind of shit I do? Um, I'm I'm blanking the word. Um. Anyway, I'll, 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 it'll come back to me in a minute. But abstract, thank you. My, uh, you know what? That was without an edit. Just popped in my head. Abstract. So like I do abstract sort of art, and like the shit I do. I'm like, am I like the abstract Bob Ross? It's like, oh yeah, you make a line here, and then you make this line, and you do this, and you do this thing, and you kind of swish, and then make this turns into this thing, and this turns into a cloud, and you go smudgy, 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 smudgy. And you just kind of grab the thing and you do the thing and you try it. You try and you make the thing and you go like this with the thing. And then now you have a happy little tree. I don't know. Maybe I am. I'm not about to, you know, I, I, for, I'm just going to right now, I'm going to retract that whole thing. I'm in no way anywhere resembling Bob Ross. <laughs> Other than sort of the free flow thought, you know, when you make a mistake, you make a mistake. Mistakes are only opportunities, especially in art. Um, perfection is imperfect. Imperfections are perfections in art because there's nothing wrong in being creative. And I don't want to get back on the creativity rant thing that I did last week, but which it seems like, man, isn't that one of those singularity things where it seems like when you talk about something or you, you hear something, suddenly everybody's talking about it. So many people after my creativity rant, I hear people talking about creativity and expressing a lot of the same thoughts and a lot of the same ideas that I did in that. But yeah, I've, I've, I've thought about the idea of like street, you know, like live streaming. I don't know, even if it was just once a week, but again, I, I wouldn't, I don't have the ability to put in the hours that people do who do that stuff. And granted, they're doing it as a job and they're doing it for the purpose of making money. I would probably be doing it for the sake of it's just another av- avenue for entertaining and, and creating a thing and developing a new skill and maybe demonstrating that all of the bullshit you hear and me bullshitting and, and pulling thoughts out of my head, you know, on the fly is how this actually happens. Um uh, I, I've said before, I don't edit much and I don't edit much just on account of my process mostly because I'm doing this by myself and it, like I edit out if I stop and cough or if I stop to take a drink most of the time or if I burped or if my phone went off. But if I was on a roll, I probably didn't cut it out. You, I'm sure if you've listened for any amount of time, you've heard my phone beep or something because I forgot to mute it or you might have heard my me put my cup down because I don't have the sound padding on this desk that I used to have on my old desk. But I, you know, I'm, my, my brain is my brain. And I guess any opportunity to empty my brain out and get ever, whatever the hell is in there out. And if there's people who are interested in listening to whatever the hell it is that dumping out of my brain at whatever time, like you are right now, I guess I'm, I'm willing to put it out there. It's, I guess in part, it's always been because I've been nervous about appearing on camera. I do it very little. Um, I probably could be recording this right now, but honestly, right now I'm way off camera. Um, because I'm leaning. <laughs> that's, I think that's the probably my biggest problem. If I had, uh, if I was live streaming something, it was a stay on camera and asshole. Um, but. I don't know. I, I, I've thought about it. I've thought about that idea of, of live streaming, maybe recording the show, live streaming, doing my artwork, um, just sitting there sketching and playing around. It would also force me to be creating a lot more work um, and maybe say, hey, you know, these are limited addition, these will be going for sale for X amount of period of time. 
or even to start like a series. I've kind of had this idea recently, and a lot of it came from me playing around, showing the boys different things, and me experimenting with different brushes in in a sketch pad. I'm really liking that, just what I can do with it. And I, I, I seem to be able to do more of what I want to do in that than I can with other things. But, you know, I, I, I've kind of been considering the idea of maybe doing a series of sketches and a series of, of drawings that kind of fit a certain pattern and or of a certain style and then moving and doing another sort of a collection, I guess you could say. And I guess because I've done a lot in, um, recently, mostly just again, because I was practicing and showing the boys, well, here's how this works and here's how this works and here's how this works and doing those and basically just doing it all in black and white as an example, because I don't need a bunch of different colors to demonstrate how a brush looks. It doesn't need to be blue or green or red. If it's a white background and a black ink on a brush or a black paint style brush or whatever, it's really easy to see how that brush works and the effect you get from using it. So when I'm experimenting with these things, I end up with these really cool looking black and white images. And, you know, then you get the, the shade, the grays that kind of blend through and, and, and all that. And so I've actually kind of been considering doing some more work just in black and white and less color into it. Just, you know, I don't know. It, it's a thought of just doing a series of black and white things. I've done a couple of them and I'm, I'm, I'm seriously, has, I'm like resisting publishing them and, and putting them up on in the places mostly because it, I'm like, maybe I should save this and do a series of black and whites and then release them as a series. And, you know, oh, I'm a big fancy artist. I'm making a theory that creates a, a collection. Jackass. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's a thought. I don't know. It's again, it's, it's, I, I, I want to do more art. I want to draw more. I want to write more. I want to do more. I want to create more. And I don't, and I, I, I have so many people like, I don't have the time to do. And like, and like, oh, I don't and like, and it's sitting there seriously like, oh, I really don't. I mean, I realistically, I don't have the time to do this. I, I absolutely sacrifice time that I shouldn't be to do this because I have a family to take care of and have a job and you know, in a, in another month or two, I'm going to have uh, other podcasts to edit for, and you know, I have work that needs attention that may keep this from happening. And there's no way if I can't do this because this would absolutely 100% be my priority. Creating this for you is my priority. How in the hell could I possibly consider doing? a uh, a live stream or doing anything else when I need to spend my time, you know, working or, you know, taking care of my family. Maybe somewhere in there, sleep and eat. I don't know. Those are still, I haven't found room in the schedule for eating and sleeping yet, but I don't know. Uh, did I mention I'm freaking out? I'm kind of freaking out. And again, half of it is school half of it is life and half of it is hoping that the crickets don't eat my cucumbers and my watermelons because fucking crickets but i'm super excited right now because of that because you know we we didn't have a lot going on and especially after the pumpkins died we got really it was so disheartening because we went from Super excited, man. We've got a couple of pumpkins coming in. Looks great. To everything died. Well, fuck. And now that I've got some new pumpkins coming in, or at least new plants, and they're they're popping up like weeds, man. Those those things just exploding day upon day upon day. They're so big. We actually had to thin them out today. 
really disappointing. One of the uh, pumpkin plants ended up having some sort of uh, some sort of a of a uh, plant disease, possibly powdery mildew or something like that. But there was a lot of white spots on the leaves, and I was like, you know what? This could be powdery mildew. This could be any number of things. But whatever it is, it's taking over the whole plant. We need to get rid of it. Even and it sucked because that was one of the ones that I wanted to keep. Because I got all the ones that I planted just to be basically bait and food for the crickets. Like, hey, sacrificial seeds, you know, if we've got so many of them, so many can get eaten and it's not going to affect us getting a crop of pumpkins. But these, (laughs) the one that was infected, basically was the one of the ones that was doing really well that I was ready to keep. I'm like, fuck, I have to pull one of the big ones. And there was another one that was just really shrimpy and wasn't going to make it. And we were like, all right, let's, let's thin them out. I've still got five fucking pumpkin plants right now. And I've got, again, I've got a couple of uh, cucumbers that have come in that are starting to do really well. I just hope, again, that nothing eats those cucumbers and we get a few more on the plants. Um... Again, I got three watermelons coming in right now. Really crossing our fingers for the watermelons, even though we know it's going to be months before they're ready. And pretty sure tomatoes are dead. <laughs> pretty sure they just got burnt up because it's been hot as hell. And I think that's actually what's hurting the rest of our stuff. Why the a first batch of pumpkins died, why our cucumbers are kind of stalled out, why our peppers are stalled out and everything else is kind of really limited is because it's been a really dry summer even for here so i think everything's kind of just been stunted we have this is we had like one good rain and it wasn't even a good rain for us it rained like one day and normally by now we'd have gotten some at least a few respectable monsoon storms but this has been dry as fuck monsoon and so it's really sucked from a gardening perspective <laughs> i'm really holding out hope that things you know you get better. I don't know. Later in the in the summer, it'll start to rain as it starts to cool down. We'll start to get a little more rain, but this sucks right now. <laughs> it's like every day I'm like, man, my plants are getting fried. Fuck, and uh, I'm really just hoping that my my watermelons don't die, and that we're able to get some p- good pumpkins. I'm 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 the most excited for the pumpkins because. They're bouncing back very quickly, and I really hope that come November, I'm going to be able to pick fresh pumpkins for pie. I'm still holding out hope. Fresh pumpkin pie, fresh from my garden. We've already uh, wrapped two bundles of sage, uh, getting those ready for uh, later when we're doing you know, house cleansings and things of that sort. Um you know, that time of year rolls around, got to have lots of fresh sage. So we've got those bundled up. I think I actually need to take, I've got one out on the patio drying right now. And if you've ever tried to dry herbs yourself, of any type, um, it helps to live in Phoenix. <laughs> you know, point of advice, if you ever need to naturally dry herbs yourself, living in Phoenix helps. Because, um, you know, when it's 115 degrees outside, shit dries quickly. I'm pretty sure I could make jerky by just leaving. (laughs) Like, I'm pretty sure if you just laid a cow in your yard, you'd have jerky in about three days. But, (laughs) hence it's Phoenix. Again, this is the place where you can literally fry an egg on the pavement. People do it every year. But, yeah. So, you know, life. (laughs) Oh, I don't know if I mentioned we got our we we got a new avocado tree. Um, we're fairly certain it's already dying. Um, I think again the the heat and the the dryness here. I think it just can't handle it. Um, so I don't know if if this one dies too, then I'm just gonna say fuck it. We can't grow avocados. They're too damn finicky. My avocados will do something else with that planter. But that is the garden town. Um. I know I'm kind of bouncing all over keeping it shorter this week. I've rambled more than I necessarily intended to. Um, again, mostly because it's late and I need to 
I don't like, I, I'm going to turn the mic off today and go to bed. Normally, what I do is I turn the mic off, start typing, start making the art for the show, and I stay up till somewhere around three o'clock and get everything ready to publish and everything ready to go. And I just sacrifice the night because, hey, it's Tuesday. It's like, I'm not working tonight, but I work tomorrow, but I can handle staying up late because, but I can't. I've got to get up in the morning. I don't have the luxury of sleeping in right now, so I'm going to turn off the mic. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to try to scratch away some time in the next day, really, just got tomorrow to do it, to try and make sure this gets out to you on time or something resembling on time. Um, that's That's what I'm hoping for right now. <laughs> And I'm, and the longer I talk about this, the longer I'm up and the longer it will take to get this done for you. But that that is me. I'm, I've said it before. Brevity is not a skill I have. Um, so I'm going to stop. I'm going to say thank you for being awesome, for listening to me. For supporting the show, however you want to do that, whether it's just by telling a friend about this weird asshole who rambles and talks about his gardens and whatever, um, or whether you choose to go to shop.oddadoutpodcast.com, wink, wink, and and buy a shirt or a coffee mug or a 18-inch square stretched canvas chaos eye print for your wall. Wink, wink. No, I'm kind of, you could. Whether you or you choose to buy me a coffee at any of the links in the show notes. <laughs> All of these things. Whether whatever you choose, however you choose to support the show in whatever way you want to do it. Whether again, tell a friend or just listening. Just being there and listening right now is awesome. And I mean. It's awesome. It's not as awesome as those awesome Patreon supporters like Chris, Derek, and Heather, Lisa, and Sam. I'm flying through you guys today. But <laughs> you could also buy a mug or canvas or skateboard. I have, I have skateboards too. That's a whole other thing. I'm stop shilling merch, Adam. Shut up. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's late. This is what instant coffee does to me. It makes me more crazy. I know, I didn't think... You, did you think it was possible? I didn't think it was possible. <laughs> yeah, I need to lay off the instant coffee. But until next week, oddballs, you can find me at odddeadoutpodcast.com and at odddeadout in all the places. And until then, maybe we'll see. Thank you. And good night. <laughs>